Welcome to Us Crazy Christians, where we uncover Christian myths and misinterpretations with common sense Christianity and comedy. I'm your host, William E. Smith, and today we're going to answer the question, are women allowed in ministry according to scripture? Stick around. If you're new to us crazy Christians and want an entertaining Christian channel free from religion, click the subscribe button. And if you're a returning guest and haven't subscribed, what are you waiting for? It's free. Plus, hit the notifications bell to be notified every time we post a new video. Let's get into it. In 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verses 34 and 35, it reads, Women should remain silent in the church. What? What you just say? They are not permitted or allowed to speak, but must be subordinate and be in submission, as the law says. What? If they want to inquire or ask a question about something, they need to ask their husbands at home. For it is disgraceful and shameful for a woman to speak in the church. That don't make no sense. ladies i'm not reading second william chapter two that was scripture from the bible but with that said i believe it may have been taken out of context and used by some in the church to hinder women from leadership and ministry period i can personally attest to the fact that some of my favorite and some of the most anointed ministers i've ever heard were women i believe this scripture has done a great deal of damage to women and the church as a whole all right, William, I'll tell you what. I'll give you a minute. I'm listening. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I get it. I get it, Miles. All right. All right, then. I'm listening. I'm, a, I'm calming down. I'm going to hear you out. Let me, let me, let me, let me take a, let me take a deep breath. Ooh. All right, go ahead. Let me, let me hear you. This misinterpretation has been taught and followed for centuries, and it is psychotic chaotic and harmful to the body of Christ. It is religious only, definitely not Christian, and not even scriptural or biblical. Let's look deeper. A lot of us crazy Christians have seen firsthand just how powerful and anointed women ministers can be. So we simply just ignore that scripture. But when we're asked specifically about it, the best answer or reply we have for that is what? Ooh, 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 I know, I know, I know. Okay, Wilhelmina, tell us. So us women would sit on one side of the church and our husbands would sit on the other side. And if it was something we didn't understand, we'd yell out across the sanctuary to our husbands asking questions. And Paul wanted us to shut the hell up. So that's why he wrote that. Say it to my face, Paul. I wish a nigga would. I wish a nigga would. Okay, okay, calm down, Wilhelmina. I understand your frustration. I have to admit that I have used that same very weak and pitiful excuse for that or explanation for that scripture for many years myself. And even if that is a valid explanation, then why is Paul saying that it is disgraceful and shameful for a woman to simply ask a question in church? Think about it. That's very over the top for simply asking a question about the message being taught. But maybe we misunderstood Paul. Just three chapters earlier, Paul is saying how women can prophesy. In Romans and other books, Paul is praising women in ministry. So either Paul is schizo, uh, self-contradicting, or simply misunderstood. Consider this, that 1st and 2nd Corinthians are response letters 
from Paul to the Corinthian church. As a matter of fact, Paul says, concerning the things you wrote to me about. So he is responding to the Corinthian church. We just don't have the letters from the Corinthians to Paul. We only have Paul's letters to the Corinthians. In our English Bibles, you can't see the quotation marks. But if you go to the Greek, they have an accent mark. And Greek historians have identified that as ancient Greek quotation marks. As a matter of fact, in 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Paul quotes the Corinthians 42 times. Square business. Square business, Wilhelmina. So let's look at it again with the knowledge we now have of Paul quoting the Corinthians. In the Greek, the accent mark is just before the word woman. So let's read it again. Accent mark first, then it says women should remain silent in the churches. They are not allowed to speak, but must be in submission as to the law. If they want to inquire about something, they should ask their husbands at home. For it is disgraceful for women to speak in the church. End of quote from their letter to Paul. The next verse is Paul's response to the Corinthian quote. Paul replied, did the word of God originate with you? Are you the only people it has reached? If anyone thinks they are a prophet or otherwise gifted by the spirit, let them acknowledge that what I am writing to you is the Lord's command. If anyone ignores this, they themselves will be ignored. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, be eager to prophesy. Do not forbid speaking in tongues, but everything should be done in a fitting and orderly way. Paul is rebuking them for their quote. He repeats it, then sternly rebukes them or corrects them for that quote. Good stuff. I thought I was going to have to cut you. Thanks for not cutting me, Wilhelmina. I appreciate that. Can you imagine how many amazing and powerful women have been stunted and hindered from ministry due to this misunderstood verse of scripture? What if we as the church had simply leaned on the side of love like Christ commands and let our lives be led by the leading of the Holy Spirit and love as opposed to scripture that is often misunderstood or misinterpreted? Imagine how much better our churches would be and how much better our relationship with God would be. Women in ministry bring a unique perspective of the love of God, compassion of God, that a lot of times us men in ministry may miss. How many churches have been hindered and missed that part of ministry from women because of this misunderstood scripture? Currently, there are two women in my top five ministers. That's Joyce Myers, and Pastor Shawnee Brandon in Detroit. Who is your favorite woman in ministry? Let me know in the comments. If you wanna see more from us crazy Christians, please hit the subscribe button, the notifications bell, the like button, and share this video with someone it may bless. Is it possible that God is more loving and compassionate than we previously imagined? Thank you for watching us crazy Christians. Until next time, be blessed.